Hello and welcome. This is of course the Sinclair QL. Now if we take a tour of the external of the QL, first of all you can see it has a full size keyboard and the keys look like the Spectrum Plus keys, but uh, they are much better quality. So Sinclair did do some improvement there and uh, all the way to the left there are five function keys. All the way to the right there are two ports for micro drives and the uh, micro drives was an uh, yeah, I better show you one. They look like this. A small little thing here that was an alternative to floppy drives. When Sinclair started the development of the QL, the floppy drive uh, was really, really expensive. Something in the order of uh, 200 pounds or more, just for one drive. And uh, these were of course much cheaper. A typical Sinclair invention. And basically what it is, is a, is an endless loop of tape that uh, runs around inside this cartridge. There's a room here for a capstan and a rubber uh, thingy that will pull the tape along and down here at the end there's a, a notch where the tape can run through uh, something like a cassette tape head. We will take a quick look at that once we open up the machine. On the right there is a connector here. It's a typical Sinclair connector. It's a PCB connector with uh, just a few wires on it. So I think this is for joystick or something. But to be honest, uh, I really don't know what it is. Next to it, there's a reset switch. A really nice feature here uh, compared to the Spectrum. On the left, we have two network connectors. These are Sinclair connectors. They are not uh, Ethernet, LAN or some other kind of uh, networking that was standard in those days. So these are totally non-standard. But for a school environment or for a business environment where they only use Sinclair machines, uh, that was pretty good. Then there's a power connector, which is also a non-standard connector. And uh, next to it we have something cool, which is a RGB out to a standard monitor. Um, so that was uh, targeted strictly at the business community. But uh, next to it we have a UHF out to a normal TV. And uh, that would work pretty good for home users. Then we have four connectors here for controls and the serial ports. And uh, unfortunately they are also non-standard. So if you had a business, you had to buy loads of these uh, connectors to connect your printer. So yeah, uh, you know, compared to a normal PC, this is probably not too good. But of course, price-wise, the QL was a lot cheaper than the IBM B PC. Um, not that businesses uh, cared anyway. Then we have a, a, a cover here for a ROM connector. And this is similar to the one in the ZX Spectrum Interface 2. Uh, mechanically at least. So that would work pretty well. And then at the end here we have a big connector here and uh, inside there is actually a Euro card connector with the gold fingers and everything and uh, all the signals from the Motorola 68000 CPU were available on that connector. And I have seen floppy drives for the QL that connected uh, that way through. So yeah that's it from the outside. As you probably know, the QL is a Motorola 68000 CPU based machine. There's really not much to see here. We have the main CPU out here. This is in a ceramic package and it's dated uh, 83. Next to it we have a Sinclair um, ULA or custom chip. And this is called, most interestingly, ZX83. And uh, don't forget that the, there was a ZX80, the ZX. Uh, 81 and uh, the Sinclair Spectrum was the ZX82 so uh, the QL must be the ZX83 and it's interesting to note that uh, Sinclair was trying to release one PC a year. Next to that we have all the RAM I'm not sure how much uh, is here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 16 uh, ICs by uh, that gives 128k total so uh, that is pretty good then we have a little bit of glue logic these are 245s and uh, 257 and another 257. So these are all the uh, bus logic. Then we have two ROM chips here. And uh, I guess that was the main issue why Sinclair initially had problems. Uh, they couldn't fit all the operating system code into one ROM. And uh, one was hanging out here through a dongle at the back. Uh, but this PCB is now a 1984 date code and um, everything has been fitted in nicely. Then we have a couple of other chips here 
uh, this one is uh, soldered in a bit wonky and we have an IC here another custom IC named ZX8302 the other one was ZX8301 up here so there are two chips to this uh, Sinclair QL chipset next to that we have uh, another little logic gate and uh, then we have the video circuit up here this is a Motorola 1377 and that chip is generating the PAL signal uh, that is sent to the modulator can up here uh, and then of course we have the two micro drives and these are individual modules and uh, there are two of them and um, at the back of that there is another micro drive uh, there's an ASIC underneath this screen here a Sinclair custom chip in uh, 28 pin I think a 24 pin dip package down here then we have some voltage regulators and the reset switch all the way to the end here and um, as you can see the mechanical design posed a bit of a problem for Sinclair down here at this end it's really really uh, there's a tight squeeze there's a massive heat sink with a voltage regulator uh, in the air on top of the PCB there are components underneath these heat sinks so this is quite uh, unique uh, then the voltage regulator on the micro drive didn't fit correctly so they cut a notch in the heat sink here as well so you can see they were in a hurry to get this thing released even though there are a few additional manufacturing processes uh, they still got it out quickly uh, and actually we can see that on the PCB itself you can see some botched resistors here wired to pin 1 on the on this uh, 75188 and uh, we have some super glue uh, down here for holding this wire that runs from over here and uh, somewhere underneath the micro drives uh, now that I noticed there's also a resistor and a transistor hanging in the air here uh, I'm not sure what that is for but uh, it looks like something to do with the keyboard and uh, we have something unique here on the Sinclair we have an, a microcontroller and uh, this is an 8049 uh, manufactured by Philips and uh, this chip is uh, responsible for handling the keyboard and stuff like that so it has a separate uh, controller chip for all the peripherals so that is uh, that is quite unique so yeah uh, there's nothing much to see really because everything has been stuck into these two um, monster ASICs from Sinclair here okay I apologize a little bit for the bad picture quality but it says uh, F1 for monitor and F2 for TV there are two windows on this machine this is because we're using a TV we have down here where you enter the commands and your program and uh, on top this is uh, where you see the output uh, if you had a real monitor there would be three areas one where you enter code one where you see your listing and one where the program is executing in so there was some kind of limited windows function okay so I've inserted the quill micro drive and uh, powered it up and it asks for monitor and TV and uh, let's press TV and uh, you can hear the micro drive is now running and if you compare the speed to a floppy drive it's still quite slow but compared to a cassette tape it's pretty good and uh, there we have the splash screen and remember every time it uh, needs to load another file it has to find the directory information first and because it's not a random access it has to go all the way around in the loop in the tape so it loops around every time and uh, that's one of the reasons why it's so slow uh, but now okay we have loaded the word processor quill and uh, as you can see it's quite a nice word processor we can just type hello world and you can see even on a normal TV it's quite high resolution let's see how many characters across there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yeah 64 in total so that is uh, pretty good for a normal TV so let's take a look at some of the other software that came with the QL as standard Quill of course was uh, the word processing software that you're seeing right now uh, Abacus is uh, a spreadsheet 
Archive is a database application and Easel is a for drawing. Okay, and while that is loading, let me just show you the feet that you can put under your QL to raise the angle a little bit. But oops, here we have our spreadsheet. And as you can see, it looks like Microsoft Excel. So uh, actually, things were pretty good. 10, and underneath we can put in 20. And underneath there we can put, let's try uh, A1 plus A2. And we get 30. So yeah, awesome. It really works the way it should. Okay, so I've loaded the utilities and uh, there are some interesting sounding ones. There's one called Clone, one called Q Doctor, an editor, a copycat, a disassembler or assembler. Then there's Breakout, yay! Because Breakout was the first game for the ZX Spectrum. And actually it came on the Spectrum uh, demo tape. Let's try Breakout for the QL. And loading, and loading, and loading, and blue screen, and, and breakout is loading, whoa, we just thought it had finished, and uh, then, what have we got, okay, uh, one player, yay, super user interface, press control to start, ah, there we go, and I, Whoa, yeah. Listen to the sound effects. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.